new seats for the Rail Miata from Cypher Auto. Let's get these out. That kind of worked. <laughs> oh, oh. These things are beautiful. Oh yes. These things are gorgeous. I was so tired of the old stock tan seats that are ripped. I did want to get tan seats, aftermarket tan seats, but they didn't make any tan seats, so we got these. And these things, oh my god, they're, they're so pretty. They are so pretty. Nice leather and some nice cloth. When we take the car mudding and whatnot, the interior does get quite dirty, so we're gonna get mud all over these seats, but I guess we'll uh, test how well they clean off. These are honestly prettier than the ones in Mali, but the ones in Mali are race car. They got a lot better side bolstering. These are more daily driver kind of ones where those are more race car ones, so. These will be perfect for the Rally Miata, but that is not what this video is about. This video is about this pile of metal, which is two under trays. So let's go ahead and assemble both of them and I can show you what they're all about. All right, so as you can see, we've got our two aluminum under trays all assembled. It wasn't too difficult, and the instructions weren't exactly clear, but I figured it out, just a couple bolts, and we're all good. They're not tightened up yet, because we want to wait until it's on the car to do so. We are only gonna be installing one of these today, and that's gonna be on the Rally Miata. The other is obviously for Molly. I wanna give a huge thanks to LRB Speed for sending me these uh, aluminum under trays. They've got all sort of awesome Miata stuff, including some door cards, which actually, Haggard Garage is little Miata that could. It's got the door cards from LRB Speed. But if you want anything from them, I'll have a link in the description below. Let's talk about the importance of an under tray on the Rally Miata. Number one is protection. This aluminum under tray will protect things like the radiator, um, some, some, of the, some of the subframe. It's most, mostly just the radiator. I don't exactly know how far back it goes uh, until we put it on the car. It will protect it from things like branches, small rocks, um, mud. Most of the smaller stuff will be blocked by this aluminum under tray. Obviously the big stuff like, you know, landing on a rock or something, that is what you need a skid plate for. But the small stuff, branches, twigs, mud, little twi little pebbles kind of thing, this will do the job just fine. The second reason was, well, I already said it, for mud. The first time I went mudding in the car, mud got all over the radiator, it got all stuck in the oil pan on the inner tie rods and the outer tie rods, it just got everywhere and it's so caked on, it's actually still on the car. This will prevent some of the mud from getting up in there, hopefully that's the goal. Third reason is for cooling. This has like a little cooling panel thing that uh, directs airflow up into the radiator instead of below it. The last thing that these under trays do is help with uh, aerodynamics. I'll get more into that when we install it on Molly, but um, it does help aerodynamics a little bit. Not like it really matters on a lifted Miata. That's pretty much the least aerodynamic car there is. Not really, but kind of. So yeah, that's why we picked these up. Um, it is time to go ahead and put it on. So let's pull the car in, jack it up a little bit if we need to. I don't know if we do, because lift kit, bro. We also have some other things to install after that. So I'll, I'll show you. Let's just bring the car in. <laughs> Another fun fact is that uh, all Miatas actually come stock with an under tray, except 90% of their owners get rid of it because it's annoying. If your Miata has an under tray, don't get rid of it. It's there for a reason. It's very, it's very useful. Very useful. Running into a problem. The, uh, the stock holes are... Well, let's just say not in the best of conditions and clogged with mud and other shit, so I'm gonna try to clean it out. <laughs> oh, that looks really sweet. Oh, yes, boy. How the hell are you expected to do this? All right, so it is in, but all the bolts are loose. Let me show you where it bolts to the car. One right there, another going up through that one. Then we have two attaching it to the subframe, one right there, 
and one right there. That's the oil pan right there, so it does not sadly cover the oil pan, but we'll get something else to protect that. And then on the other side in the same position, right there, and going up through there. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten all the bolts connecting it to the car, and then tighten all the bolts that connect it to itself. Well boys, that is it. It is fully installed. Look at that thing. Now it looks even more like a frog. Great, god damn it. Cause it's now it's like a little mouth. The Miata has its mouth back. Hope it doesn't rattle too much. It's definitely solid. Like it's it's gonna protect it like quite a bit. Now normally it bolts up to the bottom of the front bumper with these four holes, but um, well, yeah. No bottom front bumper here. Right here is a Garage Star tow hook. Adam from RevLimiter sent it to me for free. So huge shout out to Adam. He is such a cool guy. Go buy his gauges. So this will go something like this and allow us to actually use a um, tow strap. But the tow strap couldn't fit through the tow hook. That is why we tied it to the upper control arm. We're gonna go ahead and install this. First thing we gotta do is take the old one off. God damn it. So they're all probably gonna do that. So it turns out I was actually just a huge dumbass and I was tightening the bolt, not loosening it. That is why it uh, broke off. So um, we're gonna put this in here with only two bolts. It should be good, um, I, I hope. I guess worst case scenario we can put it on the other side, but I wanted it to be on the left, the left side for some reason. So let's go ahead and put it in there. It's in there. Now, as all of you guys know, I broke my last um, license plane frame mount thing. Here's the old one. It got bent up during off-roading. Oh my god. <laughs> and it sat like this, which it's not supposed to. A guy by the name of Rob Stad, dude, I can't pronounce his last name. His name goes right like this. Makes these awesome custom license plate frames. If you want one, you can hit them up on Facebook. They're cheaper than the Garage Star ones. They are easier to install than the Garage Star ones, and they look just as good as the Garage Star ones. It's, it's a really cool system. So you take the bracket, put it over the existing tail hook, you put the bolt through it on the top, put the washer on the bottom, and then put the lock nuts, and you tighten everything down. And then your license plate bolts in right there. And there we go, it's on. With a combination of the tow hook, the under tray, and the license plate frame, whoo, that looks aggressive. Now just imagine two bash bars up there. <laughs> if only they weren't like four weeks late, like the wheels. <laughs> but there's one more thing I do want to do to the car today, and then uh, we can uh, get some shots and do some cool fun stuff. And that is removing the muffler. Pretty much I want to make a custom exhaust back here, uh, probably exiting like a dual exit right in the middle. Um, so we're gonna take the muffler off. The really nice thing about this exhaust is that the muffler just bolts on right there. So we can take just the muffler off and then when we go to build the custom exhaust, we can build it off right there instead of all the way from the cat. And this will also let us know how it sounds with no muffler. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off and see how it sounds. As you can see, that just went um, fantastically, you know? Oh, it was, a, it was a breeze. Ladies and gentlemen, working on rusty cars sucks asshole. But we did get both the bolts off there. It is now separated from the rest of the exhaust, so we can just undo the exhaust hangers, two over there, one over there, and it should plop down. Oh. Oh. I really need to get one of those things where I can lay on my back and just roll around because I ruin like every single shirt I work in, like so much mud and shit. Once I start working on my car, I don't feel like, you know, cleaning up everything and just I just get so muddy and disgusting. Oh well. But the exhaust is off. I think that does definitely look better. I mean, there's no weird exhaust hanging out. Let's go ahead and see how it sounds. But before that, I'm gonna try to bend this back a little bit. That's some damage we got when we were off-roading. So I'm gonna, gonna see if I can fix that. Oh, 
It's no longer dented, but now it is uh, chipping. This paint just sucks butthole. Sadly, I don't have any more paint, so we're gonna have to take a, a run to O'Reilly's and get some, some more. <laughs> so much mud. <laughs> we're gonna have to get some more paint. Oh God, that thing smells, because there's no cat. All there is is a test pipe and a resonator. Hashtag straight pipe wife. <laughs> that looks so weird. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny looking. That is funny looking. Oh god, I'm gonna die. I swear to god, that doesn't smoke that much normally. What the fuck? So we're gonna take a trip to O'Reilly's and get some uh, more bed liner for all the things we're gonna bed line on this car. We got the bed liner. You gotta paint it when it's wet. Oh, there you go. What the fuck? <laughs> She's crazy! <laughs> what do you the? Hear it? Yes, I do, it's funny. So guys, that is going to be it for today. We installed the under tray, tow hook, and the license plate frame, as well as getting rid of the muffler, fixing this back area a little bit. Let me know what you guys think about the exhaust. Obviously, we're not keeping it like this. We will be building a custom exhaust sometime in the future. I don't know when. The under tray is gonna be awesome, although it does kind of look like a scoop from mud. It looks like mud's just gonna really build up in there. And it makes it look more like a frog, because it looks like it has a little mouth, but you know what, that's okay. Hopefully the front back Dash bars will be coming soon. Um, they should have been here like a week ago, but they're not here, so I don't know. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like, and if you are new, please consider subscribing, and I will catch you guys next time. Happy Monday. Peace out. Peace.